Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me for part two of my spotorial on Flaxbeard's wondrous steam power mod. Here at Marriott Heights High School as rendered by Rocky1380. We covered basic materials in part one and now we'll see what we can make with these materials. So we have our brass and brass plates, what can we do with them? Wrap them around a furnace and make a boiler. Keep water going into it and drop in some coal and just wait for the steam to build up. After about 20 minutes, we're at about 50% pressure in this little system. Let's do something with it. How about some charcoal? Just put a steam heater against a furnace and it cooks along at a fairly nice rate, about 10 seconds per smelt. What if we put another heater on it? Notice steam escapes from open pipes, so you can't just lay out your pipe and leave it there. You can adjust the facing of a block with a wrench, but it has to be a pipe wrench from Flaxbeards. Other wrenches or Omni wrenches won't do. And as you can see, more heaters do speed up the furnace, to 4 or 5 seconds per smelt. Good to know. There is such a thing as too much pressure, so you might find it useful to put a steam whistle on your system. It'll go off before anything breaks. If you don't like the look of brass pipes all over the place, you can cover them with just about any simple block. You don't have to make a cover or facade, you just sneak right click on the block. Some machines won't take a cover, but some do. Equipping your pipe wrench lets you see through the covers. You may be wondering, how much pressure is too much, and what happens when you have it? Let's find out.
about six and a half minutes to get from 60% to 100% pressure. Boy, that needle looks nervous. Jumpy, even. And there goes the whistle. And there goes the blam, right at 119% after three minutes of warning. There's a bit of a mess. However, since there are no loose pipe ends, the system is still closed and free to build more pressure. Now that's a proper failure, just under two minutes after the first one. Alright, I'm going to clean this up and we can talk about the other steam powered blocks. That looks a bit better. Now, here we have the Archimedes screw. It's a simple pump that will draw fluid from a source block in front of the low end and place it in a liquid inventory in front of the high end. It needs steam to run, and as you can see, it only runs when it has water and a place to put it that is not full. Next, there's the steam smasher. It's all the ore processing flax beard that gives you. There's also no block placer in this mod, which would make it hard to automate without another mod that has one. It gives an extra 40% return. Not a lot by Resonant Rise standards, but certainly a big help if you're on a hard mod pack like Terra Firma Punk. In most mod packs, you probably won't have a use for it, unless you want a cool way to make gravel. Or sand. If you have Ex Nihilo installed, you can also smash the sand for dust. Next up is the steam hammer. You place it over an anvil. Its interface looks the same as the anvil's, but it's not the same one. It does the same thing, but it uses steam instead of experience points. It doesn't stop you from using the anvil, though, so if you don't watch it, you can find yourself spending experience by mistake. Still, it's a big experience saver if you're enchanting from books or have a lot of naming to do. These blocks are the steam filler and the steam filling pad. We'll go into these blocks in the tools chapter.
If you need a lot of steam quickly, or if your shop just isn't dangerous enough, you can make one of these, the flash boiler. It's much the same as a regular boiler, but it's a 2x2 multi-block and it's way faster. When you're building steam this quickly, you're going to want some more protection on your system, like this rupture disc. It's like a steam fuse. Just before something would normally break, the disc breaks instead, venting the pressure from the system. When it does, you can fix it with a new zinc plate. Of course, it still won't last long if you don't have another way of stopping the steam from building up, but it can prevent some expensive explosions. For manual steam control, you can use a valve pipe. When the handle is squared, it's open, and when it's diagonal, it's closed. There is a setting in the config file to let it respond to redstone, but by default, that option is turned off. Speaking of redstone, comparators can read the state of a pressure gauge. I'm using a Project Red comparator here so I can stick it on the ceiling, but vanilla ones will work just the same. As you can see, the signal is proportional to the pressure reading. As the pressure goes up, so does the signal. You may wonder if the steam in Flaxbeards is forge friendly. Can you use it to run a steam dynamo? Or a big reactor's turbine? Well, no. And yes. You can convert Flaxbeard steam to forge steam with this block, the pressure converter. You have to pump steam out of the big end to get your forged steam. So yes, you can drive a turbine with Flaxbeard spoilers, if you really want to, but you'll need a better setup than this.
If you feel like you've had enough of that and you want your wax beard steam back, you can just pump it back into the big end of the converter and it goes straight into your pipes again. Aw, oh, look at that. Someone threw all this stuff all over the floor. The janitor is going to have a fit. Let's sweep it all over here with this fan. Like most of these machines, there seems to be a reserve of pressure that keeps the machine going for a while after you turn off its supply. What a mess. We'd better pick it up with this vacuum. If you stick a chest behind it, it'll deposit your items into it. For our next few blocks, we're going to have to take a field trip. Here we have the steam mortar. It's a fun but imprecise way to move items. It has to be loaded with a hopper or pipes. You can't load it manually. To aim it, you have to take an astrolabe to the target. Sneak right click where you want it to hit. and right-click on the mortar. Then just load the mortar with the item of your choice, and as soon as it has enough steam, Touchdown! As far as I know, there's no real way to use it as a weapon, so it's not usable for griefing either. That is a good thing. Its range is infinite, so you can use it to send presents to your friends on their base. Then there's this little treasure, the Thumper. Does it attract sandworms? No. Does it repel antlions? Nope again. It's the steampunk answer to quarries, but instead of digging a big hole in the ground, it makes a big underground ravine. If you place them together, they synchronize, but it seems to me they work faster if you stagger the timing. Let's see how big this thing actually gets.
As you can see, it starts off fairly fast and slows as the chasm grows. The chasm extends in the direction that you place the thumper. According to the FTB wiki, it will only break blocks that use grass, clay, rock, ground, or sand materials, but I have found that it will break machines and chests. After about four hours is when it really slows down, but you can always move your thumpers to continue your excavation. As far as strict utility goes, you're probably better served digging your own holes, but if you like watching Chasm grow and you love listening to explosions, go for it. This time lapse took about 14 hours to record. So that's about it for blocks and machines for Flaxbeards. Thanks for watching. Next video in the playlist will cover tools, so stay tuned. Have a nice day.